Shabbat Shalom, ESC family. What a blessing to gather together this Shabbat. Another beautiful day that the Lord has made. Let's gather in together into our living rooms. Uh, many of you are in your pajamas, but it's all good. We're ready to worship and rejoice in the presence of the Lord. Amen. The Lord is faithful who promised. I wanted to read from Luke 10 and encourage us in this season because I believe we're kind of forming new normals in this time and any formulation of pattern can sometimes keep us from the freshness of what God wants us to do. Luke 10 verse 38. Now it happened as they went that they entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister who was named Mary also sat at Yeshua's feet and heard his words. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Yeshua answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken from her. So in this season, we started off understanding we were going to have a lot of alone time, a lot of downtime. The Lord wants us to be still and know that he is Lord. He wants us to focus on that one thing. This Shabbat, let's focus on Yeshua. Let's worship him in the power of his name. Let's lift him up together and give him glory. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Yeshua, we worship you. We honor you. We glorify you. We set aside all of the work at home, all of the schooling at home. And we say this morning, we honor you. We worship you. We say Yeshua Bo. Bo Yeshua Bo. Come into our midst. We lift up your name. And we glorify you. B'Shem Yeshua. And everyone said, Amen. Let's worship the Lord together. Hallelujah, Lord. We just invite you here in this place. Lord, we thank you that you inhabit the praises of your people. Lord, we come boldly before your throne of grace because of what Yeshua has done. He has paid a way that we can come in today to worship and gather together. Lord, come and have your way. Hallelujah. Let's worship together. At your name. At your name. The mountains shake and crumble. At your name. The oceans roar and tumble. At your name, angels will bow, the earth will rejoice, your people cry out. Lord of all the earth, we shout your name, shout your name, filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise, Yeshua, Yeshua. We love to shout your name, oh Lord. At your name, at your name. The morning breaks in glory At your name Creation sings a story At your name Angels will bow The earth will rejoice Your people cry out Lord of all the earth We shout your name Shout your name Filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise, Yeshua, Yeshua. We love to shout your name, O oh Lord. Lord of all the earth, we shout your name, shout your name. Filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise, Yeshua, Yeshua. We love to shout your name, O oh Lord. Lord of all the earth. 
Lord of all the earth, we shout your name, shout your name, filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise, Yeshua, Yeshua. We love to shout your name, O oh Lord. Lord of all, Lord of all the earth, we shout your name, shout your name, filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise, Yeshua, Yeshua. Love to shout your name, O oh Lord. There is no one, there is no one like our God. We will praise you, praise you. There is no one like our God. We will sing, we will sing. There is no one like our God. We will praise you, praise you. There is no one like our God. We will sing, we will sing. There is no one like our God. We will praise you. Praise you, there's no one like our God. We will sing, we will sing. There is no one like our God. We will praise you, praise you. There's no one like our God. We will sing, we will sing. Lord of all the earth, we shout your name, shout your name. Filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise. Yeshua, Yeshua. We love to shout your name, O oh Lord. Lord of all the earth, we shout your name, shout your name. Filling up the skies with endless praise, endless praise. Yeshua, Yeshua. We love to shout your name, O oh Lord. Let's lift him up, Yeshua, Yeshua, Yeshua. We love to shout your name, O oh Lord, Yeshua, Yeshua, Yeshua. We love to shout your name, O oh Lord, oh Yeshua. Show us your heart. Show us your heart. We've come to me with you. Show us your heart. Show us your heart. Oh, we want to meet with you. And meet you where you are. Lord, we want to meet with you. Draw us close to you. Meet you where you are. Thank 
eternal Lord. You're never going to let, never going to let us down. You're never going to let, never going to let us down. When the night is holding on to me, God is holding is holding on to me. God is holding on when the night, when the night is holding on to you. God is holding on. We speak to you when the night is holding on to you, oh God, is holding on, we speak to you when the night is holding on to you, oh God, he's holding Lord, we just thank you that when the night is holding on, Lord, you are holding on. Lord, that you hold on to us, that you never leave us, you never forsake us. Lord, we thank you that your kingdom is an eternal kingdom. Yeshua, that you are the Messiah. You are Lord of all. Hallelujah. If you're not already standing, you'd like to join us. Would you just stand with us as we declare the Shema in faith today? Hallelujah. The Lord is one. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Bahau Shem The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed is the name of his glorious kingdom for all eternity. Yeshua is the Messiah. He is Lord of all. Hallelujah. I just want us to declare this one more time by faith. I just had this picture as we're all in our homes this morning. We're actually like a blanket of the people of God covering Frederick County and some of the surrounding areas of Maryland, Virginia, Pennsylvania, West Virginia. Maybe you're joining us from a different state altogether. But I just saw this picture of us 
networked across the land, just declaring this in our cities, in our towns, in our homes, and in our families. So let's just declare this one more time by faith this morning, that he is one, that his kingdom is glorious, that it is eternal forever and ever, and that Yeshua is the Messiah. He is Lord of all. Let's declare this together. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed is the name of his glorious kingdom for all eternity. Yeshua is the Messiah. He is Lord of all. Ve'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha v'chol levatcha uv'chol nafshecha uv'chol me'odecha v'hayu hadvarim ha'era asher anachi metzavcha ha'yem al libadecha v'shenantam libanecha v'de'orkebam v'shivtecha v'vitecha uv'lechtecha v'adirik u'shafecha uv'chumecha u'shatom le'ot al yedecha Vahayu le totototot bein enecha, ukshatam al mezuzot techa uvi shalecha. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words which I command you today shall be on your heart, and you shall teach them to your children, and speak of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and to be as frontlets between your eyes. And you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Hallelujah. Lord, we just thank you for your presence this morning, Father. I just thank you that there is acceptance in your presence, Father. I just pray for anyone who's watching this, whatever state their mind, their heart is in, Lord that they would just enter into your presence with thanksgiving, Lord, that your love would cover them. Just thank you for them, Lord. Just pray for your joy just to be instilled in their heart and in their mind, freedom in their mind, Father God. Lord, just thank you that where the light is, the darkness has to flee, Lord. So I just pray for your light just to shine in people's hearts and in their minds today. In Yeshua's name. Sorrows and dreams of joy.
Just at this time in the presence of the Lord, I just want to invite you, if you're watching this right now, and you've never asked Yeshua into your life, you've never asked Yeshua to be Lord of all or declared that he is the Messiah, we just want to invite you to do that right now. I just feel the heart of Yeshua that there's someone watching this this morning that is desperately trying on their own to fix themselves, and you've been trying, and you've been trying, and you keep falling on your face and you keep hurting yourself over and over again. And I just wanna let you know that Yeshua is patient, that he is loving, that he is kind, and he's the only one that can heal those wounds and those scars. His love existed long before your pain and will endure longer than your memories of the past. So I just wanna invite you right now in the presence of the Lord, just to join me. I'm here with you, we're here with you, agreeing with you, to just ask Yeshua to come his blood has paid for us. His blood has paid for us. It's paid for it all. All of the sin, all of the shortcomings, all the failings, all the hurt, all the rejection. So let's just call on the Lord together right now. Hallelujah. Yeshua, you are my Messiah. Yeshua, I believe that you are my Messiah. Lord, I feel my faith is weak, but I know that just a mustard seed, just a little bit is enough. So today, Lord, I just call on your name. Yeshua, I believe that you are the Messiah. I ask you to cleanse me of my sin, that you would forgive me, that you would wash me with your purity and with your blood. Lord, I ask that you would heal me of the scars from the past. And Lord, I ask that you would make me that new creation that you promised that I can be in you. Lord, I ask that you fill me with your Holy Spirit right now. Fill me with the breath of God right now. And Lord, I just thank you for the joy that is filling my heart, filling my soul, filling my home right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you just prayed that prayer for the first time, I just want to encourage you to reach out to somebody in our community. We would love to talk with you, pray with you, and be able to get you some resources and walking with Yeshua. I also just want to pray over all of us as a community right now. 
just that the Lord would refresh us, that he would fill us with his Ruach HaKodesh, his Holy Spirit once again. So if that's you, would you join with me? Hallelujah. Lord, we just thank you for your blood that covers us. Lord, thank you that it covers our hearts, it covers our homes, it covers our world. Lord, that your arm is not too short to save. Lord, we just ask for a fresh indwelling of the Holy Spirit this morning on this Shabbat. Fill us, Lord. Fill us, your people. Refresh us today. Lord, let us hear your voice today and quickly obey. Lord, we just respond and say how we love you. We just thank you for your goodness. B'Shem Yeshua, and everyone said, Amen. Let's continue in worship. Shabbat Shalom, ESC family. It's good to be here with you today. We're so excited. 
Lisa also has been missing, we've both been missing you all so much, and she's here today and she wants to share a little word, so she's gonna do a little introduction and a word here. And before I um, do the introduction and the word, I wanna make sure to acknowledge all the mothers. This is Mother's Day weekend. So right. if you are a mother, um, happy Mother's Day. And if your mother is still living, give her a call today. I'm sure she would really love to hear that. And also, if you don't have a mother and your mother is not you know, with you anymore, there, I'm sure that God sometime in your life brought someone who meant something to you. And if they are still living, pick up the phone and give them a call today. I think that would be a real blessing. I just wanted to share uh, before Huey shares with us, are you ready? Are you ready? Matthew 24, it talks about that, what's gonna happen at the end of times. Then right after that, it goes into Matthew 25 and it talks about the 10 virgins. So there were 10 virgins, five of them were wise virgins, and five of them were foolish virgins. Virgins, <laughs> virgins. Um, and what happened was these virgins had lamps. Five of the wise virgins, virgins had oil in their lamps. Five of the other ones were foolish and had no oil. As I was looking over this, um, I just started thinking about that. It was really interesting. And basically, in this parable, of Yeshua was saying, be ready. And my question to you today is, are you ready? And these virgins, after they were supposed to have their lamps full, some did, some didn't, there came a time of waiting. Now, during that time of waiting, I don't know what they did. Did they watch Netflix? Did they get on Facebook and before you knew it, uh, two hours were over and you wasted half your day? Um, maybe they had to cook a lot because they were staying at home and uh, th they hadn't cooked in so long and they had to cook uh, breakfast, lunch, and dinner and they got really tired of it. Basically, what happened was they had some time because it took time for the bridegroom before he was going to come back. And that's one thing that you have right now and that is time. And I'm saying to you, are you ready? What are you doing with your time? What is your priority during this time? Then what happened was, all of a sudden at midnight, the bridegroom said, I'm gonna come back. He's gonna come back. And there was a change. That's what we just went through. I don't know about you, but I was going along in life and everything was going really fast paced and well. And then all of a sudden, it's almost like overnight, everything changed. Then you were shut in. You only had to leave if you were essential personnel, you could go out. Everything changed overnight. And this is what happened to those 10 virgins. Now, this part of the story is so interesting to me. What happened was the five that were ready with their oil, they got up and they were ready for the bridegroom. The other ones, they were not ready. And so they said to the ones that had the oil, give us your oil because I don't think, we don't have any and we want to be able to um, meet the bar bridegroom. And it's so interesting what they said. They looked and they said, no, you're going to have to go and buy your own oil and you're not going to take mine because I'm not going to have enough to go on the journey. I say to you, how many times have we expected preachers and other people to fill us because we don't get in this word ourselves? And that's what I want to talk just a little bit about today. You know, you're a fool, according to the word, because the virgins that didn't have the oil, they were very, very, very foolish. And here's another interesting thing that would happen. While they were away at the store getting oil, the foolish virgins, the bridegroom came and he took the ones that were ready and he went behind the door and he shut the door. Then the five virgins that were foolish, they came back and they knocked on the door and said, let us in, we're here now, we have oil. But the bridegroom looked and he said, I don't know you. 
I don't know about you, but I was at the store the other day and I have a cell phone and there's an app on there. And as I was grocery shopping, if it's so cool. You look at the phone, it recognizes my face and it opens up, I can get my app, I can find out little things about what I'm buying. Well, I looked at the other day at the phone while I was at the grocery store, but I had my mask on my face and it didn't recognize me. One of the things that you do not want to do while you have this time, use it wisely. You do not want to be unrecognized by the bridegroom when he comes. Another time I've been relying on Huey a lot to keep me up on the news and what's going on and the statistics. And so I thought, well, you know what? I better be doing that myself. I'll take a little bit of time. And I'm going to watch some of this TV. So I turned it on and then I looked at uh, Facebook and I started reading all kinds of things. And, and all of a sudden, this fear just started to grip me. And I thought, hold on a minute. Where is my faith and my trust? If you fill yourself too much with that type of stuff, you are going to be fearful and you're not going to make it. You know, today, what you need to be, you need to be filled with the Spirit of God. And you need to be filled with the Word of God to help you in times like this. And I want to talk to you about, I'm really going to get personal with you right now. I want to talk to you about your stimulus check. You say, oh, Lisa, you're not going to go there. Oh, yeah, I am. I don't care what you do with your stimulus check. Some of you get it, some of you don't, uh, depending on your income. Some of you have already got it. Some of you can't wait till it comes in the mail. All I'm saying to you with that stimulus check, check with the Spirit of God and let him be a part in that decision of what you do with it. You might be someone who doesn't really need it, but there are lots of people right now in need. And you've got a mountain in your life, but you know, that stimulus check is just a little molehill. And if God tells you to give that stimulus check away, because I'm going to split that mountain that you've been waiting to have split. So be sensitive to the spirit of God. This morning, it was about three o'clock in the morning. Or, let's see, this is, uh, yeah, it was about three o'clock in the morning. And these words came to me. And earlier in the service, Andrew had a word that someone, he felt, you know, you were, um, you needed to know God. You needed to be born again. You needed to ask Yeshua to come into your heart because he loves you so much. He loved you so much that he came and he died for you. He literally died. That's how much God loves you. And he wants to have a relationship with you. Well, these words came to me this morning. Conservative values doesn't mean you know God. A lot of people think that they're okay because they have good conservative moral values. We have some, I have people that I know and that are not, do not walk with God and they are extremely conservative and through all of this fear has overtaken them. And you know, fear is not a good thing to base good decisions on. And you know, another thing, public opinions will always change. They're like waves. One minute, this person's doing a great job. This leader, I like him. I think he's great. The next minute, another wave comes in and the public opinion goes to another way. But I'm going to share, as Huey gets ready to come here, I'm going to share a real story that happened to Huey and I and that will help you uh, to base what you put your faith in, and especially during times like this. When 9-11 happened, September the 11th. Two months after that was Huey and I's anniversary and we always like to do something. We rode up to Shanksville and while we were up there, we, uh, where the flight 93 went down, we, and there wasn't a memorial. There's a beautiful memorial there now and when everything opens up, I highly suggest you go there to acknowledge the heroes that day. Well, this was right two months right after it happened. And we rode up there and there were uh, pictures and flowers and mem mem memorabilia of things that people had. But you know one thing that stuck out? When that plane came down, everything disintegrated. The people were gone, the clothes were gone, the plane was gone, everything. But there was only one thing left. And you know what that was? It was a black Bible. 
It was totally intact. There was nothing wrong with it, and it survived. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but God says my word will not pass away. So my encouragement to you this morning, are you ready? Are you spending your time wisely? It's okay to watch Netflix. It's okay to cook that you have, it. you have more time to do that. You're working at home. You're on Zoom meetings all the time. But where is God in your priority during this time? Make sure he's at the top. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. <clears throat> yes, God. Matthew 24, 20, uh, 44 says um, that we must be ready. So I want to encourage you to think about the word that the Lord put on Lisa's heart today uh, about being ready so that you uh, have this time to use it wisely. Thank you, Lord. For the message that I'm going to share today comes from Ephesians chapter 2. You know, it's like so many things. It's You can get so used to uh, reading the same passages, you know, for years and years. And just recently I was... Um, I had my Bible here. I was worshiping, praying here in the, at the, in the building. We do that, you know, still um, three times a week from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m., Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And uh, I was here just by myself. I opened and I started reading from Ephesians chapter 2. And, you know, it's like the Word just has a way of coming alive and fresh. And it's like you're reading it once all over again for the first time. And so I started um, reading from Ephesians chapter 2. So if you have your Bibles, um, you want to turn there. And uh, before I get into it, I just want to share, you know, in Ephesians chapter 1, Rabbi Shaul, the Apostle Paul, he kind of goes into an introduction, and there's just so much in the book of Ephesians anyway. It's like every line is just full of revelation power. It's just amazing, the book. Um, but he, he goes kind of into an introduction, and there's just a lot in chapter 1. Um, but the, the, one of the points that, stuck, that um, stood out to me was in verse 13, where he says, about the believers there in Ephesus, that in him, they said, um, you were the ones who were, you were listening and you heard the message of truth. You heard the gospel of, of your salvation, he says. And, and he said, and, and, and as in hearing that, you also believed. It's one thing to hear, but it's another thing to receive it in your heart and really believe the message um, that it applies to you, that you need this message uh, of the good news of, of the salvation that comes through Yeshua um, Jesus, our Lord. But he um, says, and you were sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. And he goes on in, in Ephesians chapter 1, and he speaks about the inheritance that the believer has. And we have an inheritance in him, in Messiah, in Yeshua. And it, and it also says that he has an inheritance in us, in verse 18, an inheritance in the believers, in the, in the saints. It's such an amazing book, and it's even just a chapter 1 is such a, a powerful um, chapter that leads into chapter two, and just want to encourage you to read. Um, you know, you can have a little assignment here: read chapter two, read chapter one, and uh, and a few others. I'll, I'll remind you before we're over, before this message is over. Um, but it's such an incredible chapter, uh, chapter one, and then it leads into chapter two. And before he gets to chapter two, he he, you know, I think about how do you sometimes get a hold of this kind of revelation? How do you get a hold of what God has for your life? And then he, he says, he, he prays this prayer. He says, I pray that the eyes of your understanding would be open. You know, I noticed that this verse, um, this verse, the uh, verse 17, verse 18, and, and then the eyes of your understanding in chapter one. Um, you know, a lot of people are praying this prayer that Paul prayed um, more. It seems like more and more in the last 20 years. Um, that the eyes of your understanding, that you'll have the spirit of revelation, the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. So I want to encourage you in that, that God will, uh, he'll fill you, he'll give each one of us uh, this revelation and understanding in greater measures. But in, in chapter two, uh, that morning I just opened it, I started to read, and it starts out like this. It says, and you were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. Among them, we too all formerly lived in the lust of our flesh, indulging in the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as the rest. 
And then it goes, it's like the first three verses are like speaking about, you know, uh, where we were before we knew Yeshua, before we knew the Messiah, Jesus, you know, our condition, you know, our, the way we thought, the way we acted, um, the way, you know, that we were under the influence, we were under the control of the prince of the power of the air, the, the prince of darkness. And it says that we were sons of disobedience. It was like disobedience was our nature. Rebellion was our nature. We were, we were children of wrath. And, you know, we know that there are still people like that, of course, today. Not everyone believes, but... But God did something. He changed us. We, we aren't the who we used to be. And, and when it comes to verse 4, like verse 4 just kind of really hit me. It's like, you know, it's just so powerful. And um, it starts out and says, but God. You know, say, but God. Uh, well, hey, it's something to, uh, to keep yourself. Don't be falling asleep out there. Uh, but God, being rich in mercy because of his great love for which he loved us. But God being rich in mercy. He's, God is rich in mercy. That's who he is. That's his character. That's the person of who he is. He's rich in mercy. And because of his great love, you know, I hear John 3, 16 in that verse, you know, because of how much he loved each one of us while we were still in our miserable condition, uh, God, who was rich in mercy, he, he did this amazing work. He, he brought salvation to us. Um, in verse 5, it says, even, then, even when we were dead in our trespasses, he made us alive together with Messiah. By grace, you have been saved. And he raised us up with him and seated us with him in heavenly places in Yeshua, the Messiah. Thank you, Lord. That's verse 6. I was just thinking about these passages as I was reading it that morning. And, you know, it's like even in my condition where I was, you know, the, the Bible says, while we were yet in sin, while we were yet sinners, Romans uh, 5, 8 says, you know, Messiah died for us. He, he saw our condition and he, he didn't say, oh, they're, they're just... They're just too. They're just too far. They're just too bad. They're just not worth it. No, he he was willing to suffer for us. He was willing to die. And 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 in, in these verses in verse five, you know, I noticed that it it says, you know, he he said he said he made us alive. It's like you know we were in this dead condition because of our transgressions. But then it says he made us. Can you say made us alive together? made us. And then it says he raised us up in verse six. And then he seated us. We keep hearing all of these things about us and then, but they're always in him and through him. And because of him, because Messiah was raised up, you too are raised up because Messiah has been ascended and seated by the, by the father at the right hand. You too now are with him reigning in, in him. And, and, you know, these verses are not just things that, that are going to come in the ages or in some distant uh, day uh, when, you be, when you are with the Lord. Yes, that's true. The fullness of that will come. But this is a now word. He says these things are happening. These things have happened now. You've been raised with him. You've been seated with him. You are now uh, in, with him in those heavenly realms, uh, in Messiah, and it's, it's a powerful word of who we are in him, the inheritance that we have in him and what he has in us. Thank you, Lord. But we will, uh, in the ages to come, experience the fullness of this. But even now, we can walk in this. Even now, we live this. This is our life. We're not who we used to be. We've been changed. And, and then a day is going to come, like the scripture says, when we see him, we will be like him. In a twinkling of, a, of an eye, we will, this old flesh will be changed in that moment. But even now, God's changing and he's working in us. He's raised us in Messiah. It's powerful. And in verse 7, you know, it's just like, verse 7 just takes me to another place. It's like, verse 7, it's like he, he's speaking of all these things of what we have in him and through him because of him. And then all of a sudden, he kind of pulls back the veil and he's, he just gives you a glimpse of what's coming in the ages to come. And he says, in verse 7, wow, what an awesome verse. He says, so that in the ages to come, he might show the surpassing riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Messiah Yeshua. Or another way of saying he might show the surpassing or the uncomparable measure of his grace 
that, that he's expressed in kindness toward us. It's like, how do you even begin to compare this grace that he has already done, but in the ages to come? That's not even just an age. That is ages. We're talking we're talking millennia. We're talking eternity uh, throughout eternity. We're going to just be like, you know, I'm thinking about it sometimes. I was just, I keep getting this picture in my mind as I was thinking about this. Lisa used to mention the word waves. You know, the Bible says all of your billows and all of your waves come over us in, in Psalms 46. But, but um, I was thinking about, you know, in eternity, it's going to be almost like you're at the beach and you're in the water and a wave comes up and it kind of hits you and, and you kind of recover and you're starting to feel like I'm getting my footing. I'm getting my footing. It's going to be like an eternity. You're just going to get hit by this wave of, of the glory and the goodness and the, and the kindness and the grace and the mercy of God. And, and you're going to be like, wow, God, your love for me. And, and all of a sudden you're thinking you're just starting to get your footing and then another wave's just going to come in on you and you're going to be like, Wow, it's like a fr it's like fresh and new, like you're going to be like trying to get a hold of this once again. As soon as you think you have a little bit and you've got a grasp on it, it's going to come in on you. It's like, wow, God, you're just so good. You're so awesome. You're so amazing. You know, what is it that we're going to be beholding? What is it that he's going to be showing us throughout eternity for the ages to come? He said he's going to be showing us the surpassing riches of his grace and his, his kindness, that his, he's expressed kindness towards us. How is that going to, how is he going to do that? What's that going to look like? And I believe in verse 8, he gives us a glimpse of what that's going to look like. And, and verse 8 is a very popular verse, just like John 3.16. It's used very much in evangelism. And it says, for by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Throughout eternity, you're going to be amazed and you're just going to be like being washed over by these waves of, of the reality of, God, I, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't, I couldn't save myself. I, I had no good works. I had no way of, of God, you, you, I didn't earn this. I didn't deserve this, like the song says. But God, you, you showed your grace to me. You showed your love. It's because of your great love that you, that you forgave me and you, you came into my life. You saved my soul. Thank you, Lord. Like John 3.16, you know, John 3.17, we don't, we don't quote that very often, but it says, you know, that God, he, you know, he, 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 um, and, you know, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish. And it says, but God did not come into the world to condemn the world. It's such a powerful verse 17. And this is such a powerful verse. Verse 8 and 7 ties together with 8. And they go together. And it shows us that God is going to, sh he's going to reveal, even now he's saving us by his grace. But in the ages to come, we're going to see it uh, just continually. We're going to be... Uh, we're going to be astounded by the, by the goodness and grace of God. Um, we're going to realize, wow, God, I couldn't do this. I couldn't earn this. I was never going to, even on my very best day, I couldn't try harder. I couldn't, I couldn't earn it in any way. I couldn't uh, try to be good. I couldn't do enough good works. Uh, God, there was no way. I had no help. There was, you know, he said, he said he searched for an intercessor. He looked for someone who would stand in the gap, but there was no one. Only God himself could do this. Not a man, not an angel, like we say at the Passover. Only God could deliver. Only God could do this. He had to come as a man and walk among us. He had to be tempted in every way, just like us. But only God could do this to forgive us, to cleanse us, to make us right with him. It's by his grace. And throughout the ages, we're going to just be... We're just going to be saturated in seeing this and thinking about this. And, you know, what we didn't get, what we deserved was, you know, we were sons of wrath. We were, we were, we were children of wrath and sons of disobedience. We deserved that. We deserved to be punished. But Isaiah 53 says that, that he, was, he was pierced for our transgressions. It says he was wounded. And another translation says he was crushed. The Messiah was crushed for our iniquities. Have you ever thought about that? He, he was crushed. He, he died of, of a broken heart. They didn't have to break his legs. He was already dead on the cross. He gave his life. He was crushed under the weight of my sin, under the weight of your sin that crushed him. He took that place where we deserve to be, and he suffered for us so that we didn't have to have that. For the ages to come, we're going to be just contemplating. We're going to be overwhelmed by the goodness and the kindness of God. 
that what he has done. And in verse 10, such a powerful verse, I love verse 10, for, for the results of all these things are that we are his workmanship, created in Messiah Yeshua, unto good works. God has good works for us, but they come in Messiah. They don't come in our own ability or our own effort. And unto good works, which God has prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. I'm just so thankful. I'm just so encouraged, you know, that he, he loved me. You know, he loved each one of us before, even before time. He, 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 he was the lamb of God slain from the foundations. And, you know, I like to see things in the big picture. And as I'm kind of closing this, I just want to say, you know, the book of Ephesus, you know, he, it, it mentions it, of course, uh, the church in, in, in Ephesus in the book of Revelation chapter 2. And, you know, as you're reading, as you're kind of going back over what I'm sharing today, you know, read what I said, Ephesians 2, read Revelation 2, read John chapter 3, and read Isaiah 53, tie these all together. Um, but in, in Revelation chapter 2, he, you know, he speaks of the church of Ephesus. He tells them about all the good things that they're doing. And, you know, they really had it down when it came to the doctrine. And they could spot a false apostle from a mile away. You know, they, they, they were doing all the right things. But, but something was happening along the way. You know, it said, it said, you know, I have this one thing against you that they, they left their first love. And I've heard people say they lost their first love. But he says they left it. You know, if you lost something, that gives the idea that you may never be able to recover it. But if you left something, you came to a, a, a fork in the road and you went, you went a different direction, or like I do quite a bit, actually. I leave my keys on the counter and I'm outside by the car and I realize I don't have them and Le I'm hollering, hey, Lisa, can you throw me the keys? You know, I can, I can find my way back to what I left and I can recover it. You know, if some, you know, over time, sometimes, you know, you're, you're with the Lord, you're, you're walking with the Lord, but sometimes things become routine. You're at home, and now, like Todd said, you're into this routine where you, like, you just don't feel like you quite have the edge for some reason. And he tells them in the, in the book of Revelation, he tells the Ephesians, you know, I want you to repent and go back and do those first works. Do those things that you first did when you were a believer, the love of God. It's all about the love of Messiah, how your heart was changed because you were forgiven and you knew you were forgiven. You knew you were brought out of darkness into light. So I want to encourage us today that if you feel like you need to come back in some way, you need to just get a new, just let another fresh wave of God's goodness and mercy and love wash over you today. Just say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, come, just help me today, Lord. Just uh, Holy Spirit, do a fresh work in my heart. Show me. Give me the spirit of wisdom and revelation, afresh and new. Let, it, let me see what you have done for me, Lord. You were crushed for me. You carried my pain. You carried my, my hate, my hurt, my struggles. He carried all these things. He carried your sin for, for each one of us. For Thank you, Lord God. We thank you today. And we're just in this time, Father, I thank you, God, that we're in this time leading up to Shavuot, to Pentecost. And Lord, this is a time when you spoke to your disciples concerning the things of the kingdom. And Lord, you were preparing them for what was coming, Lord. You're, you're leaving and the Holy Spirit being poured out. And Lord, we just say today, prepare us for what is coming, Lord. And speak to us from the book of Ephesians, Lord. Speak to us today, Lord, uh, about the things of the kingdom, Lord. About what you have done, Lord, and what, what you are doing. And what is to come in the ages that are coming, Lord. I thank you today, Father, for your people, Lord. I thank you for El Shaddai. Thank you for each one listening today. Father, pour out your spirit, God. Encourage their hearts. Strengthen them with all might in the inner man. In Yeshua's name, amen. Let's pray and worship together with the Aaronic benediction. <laughs> Ya er Adonai panavelecha vichunecha Isa Adonai panavelecha Vesem lecha shalom May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his countenance toward you and give you his peace. The Shem Yeshua Mishikim.